Who was Joan of Arc? Noah's wife. <laughs> Salut. Welcome back to another episode of NAFGO How To. I hope you're all enjoying being American citizens with all that grinding you've been doing for Jalter. And so, to get your mind off how fucking tedious grinding for tars, roots, horns, and tears are, I'll tell you a little bit about how to use everyone's favorite French saint waifu, Joan of Arc. Or, if you're not a degenerate American like me, Jean de Ah. Levioso. Levioso. Jean Nu is a five star ruler who's been with us ever since the release of the game, which was now almost nine months ago. Can you believe that shit? It's already been almost a year since the game launched, which is amazing given how many people called this a dead game a month in. She's a support tank that can last goddamn forever thanks to her class as a ruler and has abilities that can take care of her team with some very handy perks if used properly. Truly the French waifu everyone would love to have. Well, except not this fucking idiot. Levi Strauss has 16,500 HP, which is one of the only stat ratings I can think of right now that's really easy to remember because it actually ends in two zeros, unlike every other stat out there, and 9,593 attack. When fully grailed, she has 18,076 HP and 10,501 attack. She has 99 star absorption, 10.1% star gen, 0.76% MP charge attack, 3% MP charge defense, death rate 21%, a reverse S growth curve, and she's lawful good. She has a AAA deck with an arts NP, making her quite obviously an art space servant. Her buster card hits once, her arts cards hit twice, her quick card hits twice, and her extra attack hits three times. Looking at her stats, you could see Jean almost has a saber just with her health and attack rating stretched to their extremes to fit her role as a tank. Given what this degenerate thinks, it's probably not that surprising. Remember that rulers take half damage from every class except Berserkers, so in essence, Wrangler has 33,000 HP against everyone. Also, the more you buff her HP, she's actually getting double that, so giving her health foes or craft essences that boost her HP is doubly effective. So naturally, you can see kind of why she's got a reputation for never fucking dying. But when someone like Herc shows up, that kind of changes. Also note that while Jean has the star attribute, she's still weak to Enema Elish when normally servants with the star attribute aren't weak to Gil's NP. This is due to lore reasons, I guess. All you need to know is that in case you want to use Jean against an enemy Gil at any point, or vice versa, just know that she's going to take more damage than you might expect. Sort of like how she took more mental damage from walking in on a Stalfo than she thought she would. But overall, her humongous health pools, combined with her ruler class, means that with minimal effort, Calvin Klein should be able to survive most generic encounters, and she's perfectly serviceable for them. Now, her skills... Oh god. Oh god, not these fucking things. Goldsign's first skill is Revelation A, which generates 3 to 9 crit stars every turn for 3 turns on an 8 to 6 turn cooldown, depending on level. This skill is almost the same as Instinct in terms of how bad it is, and you all know how much I love the shit on Instinct as a skill in this game. It has all the problems that Instinct does. The number of crit stars it generates by itself without any other star generation aspects is too low to really make a consistent or reliable difference in your damage output, and subsequently, it's not worth all the skill gems and fucking demon hearts that it'll take to level it. Really, the only saving grace that Revelation has that makes it somewhat more useful than Instinct is that it lasts for three turns, rather than being a one-time use skill. And even then, that's the because Instinct generates more crit stars per level anyway, and sometimes more crit stars is what you want over three turns star gen. And not to mention, Revelation doesn't immediately start producing stars, it starts producing them the turn after. But since DW's clearly too lazy to buff any kind of Instinct or Revelation skill, we gotta work with what we got. So because of the star gen delay and the overall lackluster performance of this skill, Revelation is a skill that, unless you have a predetermined strategy involving it in a particular fight, you should just activate it at the start of the turn to see if you can't get some quick use out of it. But do keep in mind that Revelation does work well in conjunction with other crit star generators. While 9 stars at max level by itself might not do much, it can be a big difference maker when you've got a batch of crit stars that you've generated from a previous attack turn to make more of your attacks the next turn into crits. So in this sense, Revelation is a great support star gen skill, just not a great skill in general or by itself. Her second skill is True Name Discernment B, which reduces one enemy servant's NP damage for one turn by 15-30% to 30 on a 7-5 to 5 turn cooldown, depending on level. 
This is also another not so great skill, and there's two reasons for this. The first is that it only works against servants, so if you try to use this against any enemy that isn't a servant, well, the game has a special little middle finger just for you. The second is that even if you do use this against a servant, typically their MPs will be so strong that an MP debuff skill won't be enough to prevent them from just completely wiping your front line. Well, maybe Jean herself might be able to survive it, but chances are you're not doing a Jean solo run. Oh, and the skill is also a debuff, so there's always a chance of the game giving you another special little middle finger. So just like Revelation before, True Name Discernment only works well in conjunction with other attack or MP damage debuff skills so that its effectiveness can be put to maximum use. Pairing it with something like Amputate Everything Ladies, MP will actually go a long way to reducing an enemy servant's MP damage. Her third skill is God's Resolution A, which has a 70-120% to chance to stun an enemy servant for one turn on an 8-6 to six turn cooldown. Once again, the whole only applicable against enemy servants thing applies here, which severely limits its use. And since this is also a debuff, it always has the chance to miss, unless you get it leveled high enough to the point where it almost never will, which is nice, similar to Talmno's or Vlad's MP Drain skills. That's why the stun chance goes up so high to 120% at max rank, to ensure that John will almost never miss a stun on an enemy servant if you have it leveled enough. Her only passive skill is Magic Resistance EX, which increases her own debuff resistance by 25%, which is actually quite a lot, since that means that she's always got a quarter chance to negate incoming enemy debuffs. Unless you have a Jolter with her, that is. But as much as I shit on these skills, which may be underwhelming at first glance, admittedly, together they actually make John a potent anti-servant boss servant, if that makes any sense. Or in other words, because her kit is so geared towards anti-servant duty, she'll be a staple choice in any parties that you make for challenge quests that involve powerful servant bosses in future events, as you all probably have heard about from JP events over the past year. This is the reason why At Media ranks John so high up, since they rank servants by whatever the current meta is, which is usually determined by event challenge quests anyway, or something like that. That, and I'm sure that all the Jean waifu fags want me to go die in a fire for dissing her skills by this point. Which is fine, but I I think they should get triggered more over the fact that their waifu has a crush on a homunculus made of osmium. True Religion's noble phantasm is Luminos de Eterne, which I probably mispronounced because it's a well-known fact that Americans can't pronounce French. It's an arts MP that grants party invul for one turn and increases party defense by 5-25% to for three turns, depending on MP level. She also grants party HP regen for two turns from 1000 to 3000 HP, depending on overcharge level, but this all comes at a price of stunning herself for two turns. Post interlude, the self-stun gets replaced by a party-wide debuff clear instead. Thank God. If her skills aren't that great, then her NP is what more than makes up for them. Party Invul alone is worth the stun, though it can be pretty annoying to deal with if you have no means to remove it manually. The defense boost is negligible at MP level 1, but the more Jean spooks you get, the more it actually starts to matter. And if you happen to be lucky enough to have an MP5 pair of jeans, then a 25% defense boost for 3 turns is definitely not something to overlook. John's MP is the second half of why she's considered such a strong choice for challenge quests and the like, and even more so when she gets her strength interlude that buffs her MP by removing the self-stun and replacing it instead with the party debuff clear, which makes her an even better party support, though we're still a long way from that. So that means we'll have to be constantly removing her stun with the Alice Academy MC like the NA plebs we are. It's okay though, we can just blame Sieg for always stunning John anyway. Even if her skills aren't very useful for general battles, For All Mankind makes up for them with the sheer utility of her NP. This puts her in a ubiquitous position where you can take her anywhere with any team composition that you like, and as long as you don't make dumb decisions in battle or send her against strong berserkers, she'll take care of everything just fine. This is why you oftentimes hear people call her a very new friendly starting SSR, just because of how much you don't need to worry about ordinary shit in the game when you're first starting out. But even with that in mind, there are specialized strats that you can use with your own Baguette Saint. Jean is an art servant, so naturally she fits perfectly into an arts team, and you can create the No One Fucking Dies team with herself, Tamo, and Media Lily, and stall everyone out to hell and back, or I guess in this case, heaven and back, 
God forbid. Jean is also, ironically enough, great when paired with Berserkers because her MP can help protect and heal them, and her Bondcraft Essence, for whatever reason, is a 15% party buster buff, which is strange given her command deck, but whatever, I guess. Well, on paper anyway. The problem you'll have with that strat is trying to charge Jon's NP, and if you have two Berserkers with her, you'll likely have a rough time doing that. So maybe only give her one Berserker to take care of. Makes enough sense to me, considering the fact that she can't even handle a kid who's got the same personality as a fucking potato. Finally, needless to say, she's perhaps the best raw tank in the game with a huge health pool and her ruler class, so implementing strategies that involve her holding taunt CEs to buy your team time to set themselves up up in a more challenging fight is always worth considering. Like Nero Bride, Paige can basically fit into any team composition, but in a stylistically different manner due to her NP, since party invulnerability tends not to really care who's in your party. Really? Unless you have to go up against this guy. Other than that, there's not really much else to say here, since everything that I would have said here, I've already mentioned in at least two different ways throughout the video. Just make sure that Sieg isn't there to stun John for a third turn, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Trave Denim is the type of servant whose strengths should be prioritized with CEs, as you'll get a lot more mileage out of buffing Jean's support roles than you will trying to buff her other main weakness, which is her low attack rating. Which means that, for once, I won't recommend formal craft, thank god. Because she's a ruler, any CE that involves health regen has double the effectiveness, so things like Maiden Halloween, Moonbath, or Mikoto are good. Golden Millennium Tree and the newly released Ideal Holy King are really good on Jean in case you just want more raw health over HP regen. 2030 is also one of the best overall CEs to put on Jean, since it synergizes very well with her revelation skill, and if limit broken, and if Jean has the revelation at max rank, a total of 19 crit stars for 3 turns is actually a pretty big deal, and it also gives her extra HP to play with, which is always nice. Since Jean's NP is pretty much a staple component of her gameplay, doing anything you can to have her get it faster is good too, like Divine Banquet, Prisma Cosmos, or even better, Halloween Petite Devil, since it gives her both starting MP charge right off the bat so that she can get her first MP faster on top of extra MP charge gain. Just make sure not to give her any of the MP damage CEs, or you're just gonna end up looking like one of those Matthew supports who stick Black Rail on her for some stupid reason. And as I mentioned earlier, taunt CEs like Halloween Arrangement or Poster Girl may not be a bad idea to give Jean, but I'd recommend these only if you can form a specific strategy with them. For raw tanking, go with Iron Will Training, or if you're going up against a male servant boss, either a Holy Shroud of Magdalene or Melty Sweetheart, though Melty Sweetheart only lasts for 3 hits, so keep that in mind. Her own 5-star CE in Vessel of the Saint could also be useful if you're going up against enemies that you know don't have any debuff skills, since the CE should make Jean immune to her own self-stun 3 times. But I'd only recommend this if specific circumstances call for this, or if you're just so over Jean, always stunning herself after she uses her MP. It also increases MP gain by 15%, which is handy. And finally, French Toast's Bond CE is Revelation from Heaven, which increases party buster performance by 15% if she has it equipped and is on the field. This makes her a great fit with other buster-based servants, not just berserkers like I emphasized earlier in the video. <laughs> So in conclusion, John Dark is a very versatile ruler servant whom you can put with anyone or anywhere, and if you invest in her enough, she'll become one of your staple challenge quest servants where a berserker or adventure boss isn't involved. Until her next time, she should try to grab someone's body who isn't such a fan of french fries. And that's all you need to know about Brayer's ice cream. This time, there will not be a Twitter poll, because the next meme everyone will want me to make is French Vanilla's edgy little twin sister, Dark Chocolate. And just know that I probably won't get around to making that until after Jolter's event is over, and I think you should already know why. So in the meantime, while Anaplex continues to delay Jolter's event into oblivion, go watch Morty's video that I should have posted at the same time as this one, since the Twitter poll that I had last time was split between Mordred and John, and I didn't feel like making a tiebreaker poll, and remember to meme on as always. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the other side of the second exodus. Doses!